Hey everyone, welcome to another Flutter tutorial where in this series we are looking at updating our chat app by porting the services to use MongoDB instead of RethinkDB. And in this video, we'll begin porting our services to Mongo by first creating an account in Mongo Cloud Atlas and then change out a few of the services to connect to Cloud Atlas and use that as our infrastructure instead of rethink db so let's get right into it and the first thing i want you guys to do as i've said from last week is to head on over to cloud.mongodb.com and to create an account and also so that you might have access to a database cluster and if you have done that before there is only one thing that you need to do now uh, to get it up and running is that you need to go to the network access and ensure that your IP address here is set to all zeros. This basically is allowing a uh, connection from, from any IP address without that you might encounter some connection issue. So after you have created your Cloud Atlas account and you have configured your database cluster in our Flutter projects, we want to include a few packages that we'll be using to get started. So the first package I want to include is the Mongo Dart package. So let's go ahead and add that. So there's the Mongo Dart package. And I also want to add a flutter.env package. And this we'll be using to read our MongoDB connection URL from our ENV file. So let's go ahead and save that. We have our packages being built there. And now what we're gonna do is to create our .env file here with the connection URL to Mongo. So let's go ahead and create that file. We'll create our .env here, and I'm just gonna copy and paste the string or the URL and the env variable. So I want a test db env variable, and this is how the connection will be established to the MongoDB server. So where we have username, you will replace that with, a, with your username for your your connection and also the password. So after we've get that completed, now we can go ahead and inside of our assets folder here, we'll tell it to include our env file. Let's go ahead and clear that. And we want this to be our .env file. We can remove that there. Now that is working. So now we can start porting our services. So the first service I want to port to MongoDB is our session service, our connection service. So inside of services, we can go to user and where we have user service. I'm just gonna create another service here. And I'm gonna call it mg for mongo and user service so we are not going to delete or remove the rethink implementation we're simply going to create the mongodb implementation and then we'll inject those instead of the rethink one ones in the composition root or further of the dependency graph. 
so we can go ahead and say class mg user service and this will implement the contract which is the i user service contract and we can go ahead and create those methods so now for our dependency here we just gonna accept a reference to db from the mongodb package and let's add that to our message service as a dependency so now we can create our connect function how it's implemented in mongodb so the first thing i want to do is to get a reference to the user's collection and after that then i can insert the user or update the user if the user already exists so what i'm going to do is to say if the user id is null that means this user was not created in the database before so what i can do is to say await and i'm just going going to add this user to the mongodb database So I'm going to get a reference to the user object converted to JSON at first so that I can get the ID from Mongo when the user is created or the object is created. So now what I'm going to do is to say await my user's collection. Then I am going to say insert one. Now I can pass the data here, which is the JSON from the user object. And what I want to set the ID to is the return ID. But in order to get that, I have to first wrap this inside of parentheses. Then I can now access the ID that's returned. And this ID from Mongo is an object ID. So it's actually an object and not a string. So what I want to do is from that object ID, I want to go ahead and get the string value, which is in the this variable object ID. So I'm setting the ID based on the ID that's returned from Mongo when the user is inserted. And now I am just going to recreate the user from that JSON data and then I'll return that user at the end so that's if the user ID is null so I insert a new record if if the user doesn't exist otherwise if the user exists what I'm going to do is instead update so I'll say await and I'm going to update one. And as you can see, my trusted GitHub Copilot is giving me suggestions. So I'm going to update one where the ID is equal to user ID. And then I am going to say, set the fields that I am modifying. Again, I'm getting good suggestions here. So what I'm going to do is to say modify and set the set active to true and also set the last c 
to user dot last scene. So that's how you update the record in MongoDB. So if the user doesn't exist, then insert that user. If the user exists, there's an ID. I am just going to set the user to active and set the last scene to the last scene that's already in the user object. So that's our connect method. Our disconnect method is fairly simple. It is basically the same thing as the update here. So I'm just going to copy and paste this. And instead, I am going to say set active to false. That's basically it. But another thing I want to point out here, which is a mistake on my part. Just gonna access the DB collection and say users. And do it in one go. So inside of Mongo, how Mongo treats ID. The ID field is is treated as an underscore ID field. And the type of this field is of type object. So if I just use the user ID like this, which is of type string, then the where clause would not execute successfully. So what I have to do, I have to make a new object ID from this string and then compare the MongoDB ID with that. So what I'm going to do is inside of the Mongo Dart package, there's an object ID class and we can say from we can use that and say from hex string so we can pass the user id into that and that will then create the appropriate object id so we can map to the db expectation correctly so i'm just going to copy this also and paste it here They should be underscored. So that's basically the disconnect is to just set active to false and update the last scene. So to fetch all users, let's go ahead and get rid of those. Again, let's get the handle to our users collection. Before we can fetch the users, we are getting a list of IDs. And as I've said before, we cannot use a string ID like that. So we have to convert those IDs into object IDs. So I'm going to say final IDs, and we can say is equal to the ID collection. I'm just gonna map, map that and convert it to object IDs. Let's go ahead and make this variable ID. So we now we have a list of object IDs instead of a list of string. And then we can go ahead and say return users collection find and I'm going to find where and then ID and I passed for values my list of object IDs then I am going to Go ahead and create a list of users from the return data that we fetch from the database. So I'm just going to map this so 
and hit hit left user. Then I'm just gonna return here user from JSON. I'm gonna create a new JSON. Destruct destructor the fields that are in here but for the id field i know that i cannot pass the id field to the json function because it's object id and not a string so what i have to do is to say set the id to the id that we get from mongo get the id and then access the the oid variable So now we have our list of users. So we're basically finding users that's in this list of IDs, where ID is in this list, and convert the JSON data into the expected user object and return that. So that's our fetch method. And our online method is basically getting all users that's active. So it's be almost the same thing, but with a different where condition. So we basically can we can go ahead and copy this. Move the ID here. And instead, we're just gonna say where equal, and we're gonna say active. True. And we do the same thing here. Find where active true, then map that into our user object and return our list of users there. So now that we have our user service implementation, we can go ahead and test that. So inside of our test folder, we can refactor our tests to use the Mongo DB implementation instead of the rethink DB implementation. But first I want to add a few helper methods to this helper function list here so that it can make the test easier. So the first thing I want, I'm just gonna create a global instance of MongoDB here. there is a instance of db in both rethink and mongo so i'm just gonna rename this to m or basically namespace in the mongo package so now it's become ng.db so i am just gonna write those helper functions quickly and explain to you guys so the three functions i've added is basically to get our database set up for testing by creating the collections and cleaning those collections after each test is executed. So this one, which add MongoDB test collections, basically create each collection or table, however you, you used to it. Uh, then we have another function to clean those databases. So basically after the test is completed, we go ahead and drop each of those collection or document rather then here inside of our setup database method we're basically loading the env file using dot env then we uri encode the url from the dot env file in this case the environmental variable is test underscore db um, so we fetch the url encode that then we pass that to MongoDB create method to go ahead and create an instance of the DB. Then we open the connection and then we add our collections or create our collections inside of the database and return the database object. 
so now we can go inside of our user service test and we can change out all of these to use the mongodb instance and then we can execute our test and see if everything works as it should so the first thing i'm going to do is to create a method here called make sut or system under test and i'm creating this method so that in case if we decide to create some other implementation for example firebase as you guys can use firebase if you want and follow along uh, just the same we're simply using different implementations um, but at, at the end of the day it shows that the application is loosely coupled we can create another implementation inject it here we can have multiple implementations running like we can have mongodb storing the user ids storing the users then we have rethink db handling the messaging um, that sort of thing but it's very flexible in terms of maintenance so now we have our make sut here where we'll set up our database then we can say after we set up the database i want to call the method to create the collection so say add the mongo test collections then i'm just going to return the service here which is the mongodb messaging service and pass the db to that and i want to return this object that i've created here so i uh, use a service then now i'm just going to remove all these rethink db instances so i'm just going to see wait i uh, use a service move this move this then now sut underscore make sut and inside of our teardown we can simply say clean test database so now we have that set up We can quickly run our test and see what ha what's happening. So now we can say, go ahead and say, let's run this test, creates a new user. And I got an error saying that DB is in the wrong state. I assume this has to do with the fact that I haven't added my username and password to the ENV. Um, so I'm just gonna do that quickly and try again. So now I've added my password and username to the ENV. As you can see, the test is running successfully so that we are connecting to mongodb and we are inserting the user object and we can go ahead run this test to get online users and see what happens test is running boom test passed successfully so we know that our user service is working as it should now we can go ahead and create our message service so i'm going to create the user ser i've created the user service and now I'm going to create the Mongo implementation of the message service. So let's go ahead and say MG message service. Class MG message service. This implements I message service. Let's bring in our methods. Now let's set up our dependencies again. We need a hook instance of MongoDB. Also, we need our I encryption service, as is the case in the rethink implementation. We need our stream controller which is also we need our change stream 
So I'm basically doing the same thing that's inside of the Mongo, the rethink rather, the rethink implementation. I'm just simply changing it out, particularly the methods to interface with Mongo instead. So this will be my change stream. And inside of the inside of a constructor, let's go ahead and get our encryption service there. So now we have our constructor. Let's just dispose the two streams in our dispose method here. So let's go ahead and change stream. Cancel and our controller close. So I want to first implement the send method, which is basically just inserting a record into the table or into the message collection. So again, it's the same implementation as the rethink uh, DB. I'm looking to accomplish the same thing, but just with MongoDB specific implementation. So the first thing I want to do, as we have done in the rethink DB's um, implementation, is to encrypt the messages that's, that's passed into this method. So let's go ahead and encrypt those. String dynamic, and I'm just gonna call this encrypted messages. And I am that's gonna equal to messages, and I'm just gonna map the messages and go ahead. So, all right, let's map those to encrypted messages. So we convert our message to JSON and we check if the message is in. If we have access to an encryption service, if it is, then we encrypt the data or the contents of the message in this case. Uh, let's say encrypt message dot contents. And we set the data contents to that should be contents. So if that's the case, then we do that. I'm just, since it's the single line, I'm just gonna remove that. Also, I want to add an additional field to the data here that's not a part of the message object, but will be a field in the database or in the collection so that I can use that field to determine if a message was delivered or not. So I'm just gonna say delivered and set that to false. And the reason why I'm doing this is that because Mongo behaves slightly different from Rethink, where Rethink DB, as soon as you connect to Rethink, all the messages that were sent to you while you were offline or while the app was closed, RethinkDB will immediately pull those messages. MongoDB does not do that. So I have to now set a field to determine if those messages are new messages that you have not seen before, they have not been delivered to you. And then whenever the application loads for the first time, then it will check those messages once you subscribe to the messages uh, stream it will check those messages and then it will send those or fetch those new messages for you those messages that came in while the app was closed or, or you were offline 
So I'm going to set that field there, return. No, I can simply insert the messages into the database. Let's say final result equals to messages collection insert mini. And I'm going to set the right concern here to be right concern majority. So now that I have that, I can see final data. I'm just going to say messages and get the first one or the last one rather. Then I'll have to do the same thing with the ID. And I can return the message from the data. So that's our send a message method. Converts the message to encrypt or encrypt the contents. Then we simply insert those messages into the MongoDB database. Now we can go ahead and deal with our messaging or messages method here that handles subscribing to receive messages. So here I'm going to create two methods. First method, I'm going to create a method called fetch messages, say added while offline. I'm going to pass active users there, active user, and also I'm going to say start receiving messages, same methods in the MongoDB implementation. Then I'm just going to say return control that stream here. So let's go ahead and create these methods. So for this, I'm basically just going to fetch all the messages that has delivered as false. So messages calls to underscore db collection Let's modify what's happening here. So instead, I am going to say remove this. So find where ID or find where two is equal to the active user dot ID. And this is a string, this is not an object ID, so it's okay to use active user dot ID here. And delivered to equals to false. 
There's no need for me to sort this here. So now I'm going to say if the the messages are not empty, then let's go ahead and wait there. So if it's not empty, let's go ahead and to list. Then what I want to do is to go ahead and say messages that for each and for each message I want to decrypt the contents first. So I'm just gonna say message contents equals to decrypt the message content then message ID set the message ID then go ahead and we can create a new message from the JSON object then we will just add that message to the control so now the subscribers to this stream will be able to receive those new messages so that's how we fetch those messages that are were received while we were offline delivered false and the ID must be the user ID So now we can go ahead and create our method, our method to receive new messages. So let's create our start receive messages. We need our user so in this case user active user so we have a handle on our messages collection now we want to create a pipeline that handles what messages are received when we begin to watch the MongoDB stream. So now I'm gonna create a aggregation pipeline. Which is basically a fancy way of setting up your where clause. So in that pipeline, I'm going to add a stage And this stage match where so this is where our two field so now we when we, we have to use full document in this case So we have where full document dot two is equal to the active user ID then for in order for this to work we have to say map and we pass in the fact that this is a query.
So that's one stage. Then we need to add another stage here. Add another stage and this stage is where the operation type is equal to insert. So we are basically listening only for inserts. Go ahead again and say it should be query. So this is our pipeline. Again, it's just a fancy way of setting up your wear clause for watching the MongoDB stream so that you determine what you are watching for. So now we can go ahead and watch the stream. So we can say change stream and we watch, and we pass in the pipeline and then we listen. So we listen for the event or for the change, and then we can get the full document from the change. Then we basically go ahead and say, decrypt the contents from the document. Set the data. then get a new message from Jason. Add that message to our stream that we are listening to. And then from that, after that, we simply remove that message. So remove delivered message. So we need to create this method remove delivered message. And this method basically just delete the message. So collection Messages dot delete one where message ID is equal to object ID dot parse and we pass in the message ID here. So that's how we delete. So we are basically setting up our WHERE clause, what collections we want to listen for. In this, in this case, we want to match or listen for those collections that are addressed to us. And also, if it's an of the operation type insert, then we set up our pipeline here to watch for the Mongo um, stream. Then when we receive a new document from the stream or a change from the stream, we access the document, we encrypt the contents of the document, which is a message contents, we fetch the ID, and then we basically create a new message from the data and add that to our own stream. So that is our implementation of the Mongo um, DB message service. So now we should be able to go ahead and test that. So we can open our message service test and just refactor a few things like before to get this up and running. So I've created our make SUT method like the last time or in the user service test. 
set up our encryption service here set up db add the collections then return a new instance of message service or mongodb message service uh, with its dependencies now we can go ahead and remove these it should be mg message service can remove all of these Then here we say make SUT then we can remove these well we need to dispose that still and then we can say clean database so now we can go ahead and run these tests and see what's happening so let's try send a message here so we see the message test passed so the message was sent successfully Let's go ahead and try successfully subscribe to receiving messages. So now I'm getting some error here. In this test, in relation to CMZ aggregation stage, which has to do with here. And again, it was because I did not have a match here. let's go ahead and try that again now our test passes so that we are successfully subscribing and receive messages and let us try this test again this one should be the one that shows when we are offline and we finally log on or open the app we'll receive those messages that were sent to us while we're offline so let's try that and this one also works so it seems as though our message service on the mongodb end is working as it should so what we're going to try is to see if inside of our app let's go into the composition route what we're going to try is to change the message service and the user service to the mongodb part and see how the app works so the typing notification and everything else the group service everything else should be working on rethink db but our user service and message service should be working on mongodb so we'll be using we are using two infrastructure here just to test it out and see what's happening so let's change this to mg i think in first we have to go here and export those so let's export so we'll have to export the message service and the user service so back to our composition group we have our mg service but this should have a mongodb connection so let's go ahead and say static db underscore db uh, i think we'll have to add mongodb in the main package Mongo Dart So we add that there So there are a few failures that's happening based on uh, dependencies 
So I had to change a few versions to get that right. So I had to change image picker to version 8.6. I had to change Google fonts and I had to change the HTTP package here. I had to change this to 13.3 in order for it to work with the Mongo Dart package. So now that that is working, let's go ahead and put this from Mongo Dart. Now we have problem with the connection. So let's call this MG and let's go ahead call that mg then we can say here and we will have to configure it just as we did in the helpers so inside of the helpers We have dot net Again, we we'll have to add dot env to the main package. Should be flutter dot should be flutter dot envy. That's the correct package. I add the wrong package there. Now we can bring that in. Then encode. Back to our helpers, what did we miss? We need to encode the URI here. Oh, it's already encoded, what did we miss? I see. And now let's pass that down to we'll pass the MGDB here and also to our message service we'll call this mg message service and pass that down so now we have these two services added i am going to execute run these on my simulator and see what happens so now i have two instances running on these two simulators um, but before they were able to run, you will have to one, 
copy the env file to the main root directory here and make sure you add that env file to the main bobspec yammer file also so that the dot env can reference it to get the url remember also to start your image server here by running node uh, server slash app dot js so now that we have both running again the user service and the message service is on mongodb but the other services are still on rethink so let's see what's happening here so let me create a user So as you can see, we have we have some issue here with the image picker. Cancelled by second request. I guess I must have should have waited. Let's try with this one. Yep, I should have waited. Let's see if we can send a message here. Nope. We have some errors here. So there are more errors than not. Apparently they are. So there's more work to be done to get both working. Uh, but you guys can figure this out in the meantime. Um, I'll look at it and I'll address it in the next video but this video is gone too long now so i'll see you guys in the next video i hope you have enjoyed this one and hope that you have learned something so see